Hello and welcome to my build guide for a Shield Crush Berserker for the upcoming Scourge League in 3.16. It is a build that is getting a lot of small changes in the upcoming patch, and overall I would consider it a decent buff. Shield Crush is getting changed to have lower base damage, but more damage scaling from armor on your shield. It is also getting its base attack speed lowered by a small amount. Overall, however, these changes don't change the damage by more than a few percent, and might even be a buff for high armored shields. The idea behind this build is to use the Warbringer Berserker Notable to quickly gain up to 60 rage in order to speed clear maps. We use Impale, which allows us to finish off packs of monsters with Call of Steel. For bosses, we pop our War Chief Totem, Berserk, and War Price in order to pump out a lot of damage. If you are looking for a build with a single skill button, this is not the build for you, as we have a whopping 9 skills to regularly press. I am planning on playing this build in solo self on softcore, but it is probably viable for hardcore as well, as I did manage to reach level 93 using it in the Expedition League Gauntlet. With the defense changes coming in 3.16, I believe it is going to be quite a bit tankier as well. For leveling this build, I would not recommend using Shield Crush itself but something like Spectral Helix or Earth Shatter. My plan is to use Spectral Helix, and uh, at first I'll go and pick up some two-handed damage nodes over here, over here, and then I'll pick up Resolute Technique, path over to the Duelist starting area, pick up some more damage nodes over here, and then just get some life, some resistances, and some more life. When we get to maps, we'll respec into Shield Crush, First of all, we'll pick up some Warcry nodes, as well as some Impale nodes. The quality of life on getting more area of effect and the faster use speed on Impale Mastery is really good for clearing. Additionally, while you're still on a 4 and 5 link, you can use the Fortify Mastery that grants melee hits Fortify. This means you don't have to use the Fortify Support Gem on your Shield Crush. What we'll do then is pick up some defensive nodes. We have this new node, Prismatic Skin, that grants 2% total maximum elemental resistances. We have this block node over here, which is great. Furthermore, we path down here for some more block. These block nodes over here are just temporary before we get our Advancing Fortress Claw, which grants 15% chance to block. So after we've gotten that, we can spec out of those points and put them over here. At high levels I would recommend pathing up here to get some more life. Additionally it is worth noting that we are pathing over here to get additional mana reservation efficiency to allow us to reserve 5 auras. We are not going to be using versatile combatant but instead we are going to pick up tempest shield which grants 25% chance to block spell damage. Additionally you can get some more spell block chance on an anoint or on a shield suffix. This will result in us having somewhere around 25-35% to spell block. When it comes to weapons I would recommend using Advancing Fortress which grants 15% chance to block attack damage as well as some life. Another very popular option is the Prismatic Eclipse, but there are a whole bunch of other unique weapons that grant some decent benefits such as the Dark Seer, Screaming Eagle, Relentless Fury, LD, Iron Vorex, Tempestuous Steel, Ichimonyi. But until you get any of these, you could just use a rare weapon with some resistances. The shield is arguably the most important piece of the build, and what you want to do is maximize the amount of armor on the shield. When it comes to the suffixes, there are a bunch of different options. Getting Life on block is great, especially if you get the Warlord mod with a percentage of life gain on block. You can also get a new modifier that grants up to 16% chance to block attack damage, which, allow, which allows you to get a bunch of more points on the tree to spend on damage and life. Another good suffix is to craft the 5% chance to block spell damage. A rare helmet with some life and resistances will do well. Remember that you can craft percent of physical damage taken as fire, which is great defensively. Another good option for helmet is the crown of the inward eye, since the transfiguration of body 
grants a lot of increased attack damage. When it comes to gloves, a great option is the South Swing gloves that you can get from Rituals. These grant increased attack damage with offhand and reduced attack damage with main hand, but since you're only attacking using your shield, the downside is non-existent, which means the gloves grants 50% increased attack damage. On rings, you will eventually want to get one ring with vulnerability on hit. Additionally, a ring with the prefix crafted modifier non-channeling skills have minus 7 to total mana cost can come in useful for handling mana. For jewels, the most important stat is increased maximum life and anything else will do. One important jewel is the Lord of Steel. There are three different variants of this jewel. Uh, this one I would consider the best since it's, it provides a ton of quality of life such as area of effect and U speed for call of steel. There are a lot of different anoints that can be useful in different ways. One of the cheapest that also provides a lot of utility is the sanctuary. It provides 4% attack and spell block as well as some elemental resistances for only 1 amber and 2 teal oils which is a great anoint at the budget. You can also go for Arcane Guardian, which provides 8% chance to block spell damage. Another interesting one that could be useful if you want to go for a more sort of bossing build is the Brutal Blade, since this could provide, uh, in addition to the chance to block attack damage, some frenzy charge uptime for bosses. Discipline and Training is a really good one if you want to get tankier since it provides a ton of life. Charisma could be useful if you want to do something more with Auras. If you're not going for Crown of the Inward Eye as a helmet, you could use Tenacity, which is probably one of the best anoints, although it does cost two golden oils, so it's quite expensive. Now, when it comes to ailments, stuns and curses, we have a variety of ways of handling these. First of all, we have Tempest Shield, which grants us shock immunity. We have Soul of the Brine King Pantheon, which is updated to provide freeze immunity, which is always up, as well as 50% reduced effect of shield on you. You can accompany this with a ring craft that's new as well, which grants 60% reduced effect of shield on you, and then you're immune to shield. Before you have these in place, you can use an off-heat suffix on a flask, for example the mana flask, to provide chill and freeze immunity on use. We also need to handle curses, and for this we have Soul of Yugul, which grants 30% reduced effect of curses on you. Additionally, we have a new flask suffix, which grants up to 65% reduced effect of curses. There is also a new ring suffix craft, which grants 25% reduced effect of curses. For stuns, we have Rite of Ruin, which provides cannot be stunned while you have at least 25 rage, which will most of the time be up, and when it's not, we still have Soul of the Brine King, which prevents us from getting stun locked. Finally, we're also getting a Corrupting Blood immunity implicit on any duel. That's about it for the build. Keep in mind that this current setup is quite specialized for speed farming maps without dying. So if you have some other goal in mind, you should consider modifying the build to suit that goal. For bossing, for example, you would probably have to solve your mana without a flask. If you're a softcore and don't care about your levels, you could easily get more damage by sacrificing survivability. Additionally, the gear used in Path of Building was the gear I got farming to level 93 in the Expedition League Gauntlet, so it is all obtainable without too much issue in Solo Self Found. The Path of Building is in the description, and if you have any questions, Drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them before league start. I am planning on releasing another video on what my atlas strategy for X farming will be in the Scourge League, so just stay tuned if you're interested in that. Until next time, have a good one!